this is Candy with Candy's Topic Storytime. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Now, this happened back in 2002-2003 era, so just be mindful of that. This is before the Me Too um, movement, um, so just kind of keep in mind. Now, at that time of my life, I was living in the D.C. area, Washington, D.C. I was working as a um, grocery cashier in the uh, Virginia area. Now, which was fine. Um, my hours, because I was kind of new to the area and new to everything, I had to... Um, it was all about seniority, basically, um, where, you know, the last person that is hired uh, basically has the ugliest schedule. So sometimes my hours will be about nine to three in the morning, getting off late. And, you know, it took a toll because I was going to school in the daytime. Uh, working as a cashier, um, if anybody does know, you know, we get breaks, we get lunches, whatever. I think I came to work at that time, maybe a set of what was it? I think a, a, like seven. And then maybe um, our lunch would be maybe nine or 10. So this one particular day, let's call, we got some characters. Let's call the dude PJ. And let's call this female Sarah. And then these are just random names. I don't want to point anybody out. And, and to be frankly, I don't even remember their names. And I don't care um, about their names like that. So um, my manager comes up to me or the shift leader or whatever, they come to me and they say, um, Candy, um, take your lunch, go ahead. So I said, all right. So I went into, I was walking towards the back of the establishment because that's where the break room was. So I'm walking to the back, I clock out for my lunch, whatever. I, I probably go to the deli or something like that and um, I get a sandwich or some soup, something. I go into the back. I'm like, you know, very anal about, you know, where I have my food at, where my drink is and, you know, I'm just going with the flow. Now, mind you, the break room is in the back. It's like where they unload and they, you know, different freight trucks and whatnot. I opened up the door. I have got my stuff together and there's nobody in the break room. It's ghost. So I'm just sitting there. I'm starting to, about to eat my food. So I hear this, not a commotion. You know how you hear co-workers talking, but they're really loud and they're laughing, having a good old time or whatever. That's what I heard. I hear this, this person coming. I didn't know who it was until that individual opened up the door. The door opens and I see PJ walking in. And I probably glanced up or I probably didn't even say nothing because I probably was feeding my face. <laughs> And he comes towards me. He takes his hand. Now, mind you, we have collar shirts because, you know, it's a uniform. So he takes his hand. He takes it right here. And he pulls my shirt. Like this. Okay? So you can see all in here. I immediately take my hand and I do... <clears throat> And I said, what the are you doing? I was shocked. I, I was, it was like an out of body experience because I've never had a man or a boy, anybody in a right mind to come to me like that. So I immediately... I, I don't even know what he did. I, I was I was so puzzled. I took my crap. I kind of put it in the bag, and I was I was not on lunch. So as I'm walking out of the break room, I see I kind of bump into Sarah. Sarah comes to me and says, "Candy, what's going on with you?" Oh. You, she might have just read my energy, what was on my face, and she um, asked me what's wrong. So I say, I said, PJ took his hand, pulled my shirt like this, and uh, I, 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 I don't know what's going on. 
I, I'm, I'm shocked at this point. She says to me, well, are you gonna tell management? Are you gonna say anything? As the type of person I am, I have to think everything out. I have to analyze everything. That's just the, the person I am. Um, at, at this point, I'm 22. I, I'm, I, this has never happened to me. Nobody has ever took it upon themselves to even try me like that. So I tell her, I say, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know the protocol with this because it's not like it was told to us back in the days, you know? I uh, find another time clock and I clock in and I go back to my register. And while I'm like ringing up, you know, customers, I'm, I don't even, I'm, it's out of body. I don't even know when I clocked out to go home. That's how um, distraught I was. And I just kind of was like, oh my God, what in the world is going on? I didn't tell my manager um, or the, not even the manager, the supervisor um, that day uh, because I, like I said, I didn't know how anybody was going to react. I didn't know if they were going to, he had been at this job for probably 10 to 15 years. You know, there, it's one of those kind of situations. So I go home and I'm speaking with my, my aunt, somebody I trust that I can kind of, um, get a, you know, a perspective on what should I do. So I explained to her what all happened, and she says, you know, Candy, you need to just um, call and speak to your the manager manager, the lady that hired you or whatever. So it just happened the next morning, I call up there and I, I speak to the store manager, the one that, you know, kind of recruited me to come to that store, and I tell her what all happened. And she asks me, she says, did you... After this happened, did you clock out? Did you go home or what's the, did, what happened after? And I said, no, no, no. I clocked back in and I um, started working. I didn't understand why she kind of questioned me if I would um, clock out and go home. I mean, that's not the type of person I am. Um, I just was, like I said, it was out of body experience for me of trying to deal with, you know, this situation being so young. So I told her what happened. So she says to me, well, I'm going to have someone call you. So I said, okay, because I think that following day I was had to be to work at that evening. So probably really around 12 o'clock-ish in the afternoon, um, some man calls me. Um, the man was from the corporate office of uh, the grocery chain, uh, probably HR or something. So he's asking me, can you please explain to me what happened? You know, there's definitely two sides and we, we, we're doing an investigation on this. So we need to hear from you what happened. So I go through the whole spiel. I tell him what happened, and he says, okay, um, we'll call you back um, you know, later on this evening. Not this evening, but maybe in a couple of hours or so. So I'm like, okay. Um, at that point, I still was going to go to work, you know, and whatever. So they call me back probably around 3, 4 o'clock. Um, and this is the thing. I, I remember definitely certain parts of everything that happened because this is something that never happened to me before in my life. I'm in my late 30s now and I can still remember this, you know. So can you imagine people that actually been through worse than what this is? You know, this is, it could have escalated to something totally different and I don't know how I would have of gone or gotten out of a situation because we were in the break room, the door was closed. You know what I'm saying? Anything could have popped off at that point. So, but that's just a little sidebar. But, um, so the man calls me back and he says, okay, um, Candy, are you going, you do not need to go to work if you don't want to, because I know this was definitely traumatic for you. Um, that individual no longer works. Um, there anymore so you don't have to worry about facing your um, you know that person I said okay um, I told him I said no I'm, I'm definitely gonna go back to work you know I, I you know I, I have bills and whatever and he said no you'll still get paid um, you know they were super super 
nice about it. They were understanding. They definitely believed me because I have no reason to lie. You know, I have no reason to mess up some man's livelihood. No, I don't. But I do have a responsibility to speak the hell up. <laughs> now that I will. Even in my young 20s when I was naive and, you know, had a two-year-old trying to rip and run. No, but that, oh no, you're not going to do that to me. <laughs> no, what's it going to happen? So I told the man, I said, no, I'm going into work because I'm a worker. That's one thing you will get from, from me is work. So I go into work and I'm, you know, kind of watching over my shoulder because, you know, you don't know. We just don't know how people are. They might come in there like postal, you know. So, I, so it's swamped. It's busy. So, all the registers are kind of open. Everybody's, you know, hustling, bustling, doing their thing. So, it kind of dies down maybe in an hour, hour and a half or whatever. So, that same girl, Sarah, she is like maybe two registers down from me at that point. So, by that time, we can all kind of chit-chat, talk. So, she comes by my register, and she says to me, she says, Sarah comes to the register and right next to me, like, just standing in the middle. And she says, uh, you know, PJ no longer works here anymore. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Why would you get that man fired? I was so taken aback in my head. I said, did you not hear what he did to me yesterday? Did you not hear? See, this was wrong with some females. She says to me, oh my gosh, he's been working here longer than majority of all these people in here. And now he's out on the street because of what you said? in a calmly voice because I still have customers <sighs> I tried to hold my bearings because this is the thing that's a big issue with sexual assault and this is um, uh, a big problem that most women don't like to come forward because of women like that taken because of what he did. First of all, he should have never came in that break room and pulled in my shirt to see my breasts because that's what it was and had no right to do that. And I should have knocked his behind out. Now that's what I should have did. But I didn't. I kept it classy because I needed to keep a job and didn't want to be hustling and tussling in a break room without anybody knowing what's going on back there. Mm. So this chick, because now her name ain't Sarah no more, it's Chick. I tell her, I said, if you don't get your face and your hand out of my face, I'm going to put it. In your behind. Mm. So with all that said about sexual assault, it is doubly hard for the, you know, the person on the receiving end on how to report it, what to do, how to do it. I mean, my main thing, because I had a good backing of my family, was I trusted, you know, my aunt to help me, to guide me of what do I do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this case. So um, that's kind of the story time that I have for you guys. If you have any comments, um, definitely leave them below. You're more than welcome. And, you know, your comments may help somebody that may be going through it right now, not knowing what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And, you know, my main thing that I got back from this whole ordeal was trust your instincts and tell somebody so you can receive some help on all ends once again thanks for tuning in to candy's topic story time um you know definitely i try to mix it up a bit with my story times um especially from my younger years 
Um, but, you know, um, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much.